بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویئرس آئی ایم ان فرنٹ آف یو ود مائی نائنتھ لیکچر ٹوڈے وی ہیو ٹریول ٹو گیدر ٹو کوائٹ اے ڈسٹینس وی ہیو کم اے لانگ وے ڈسکسنگ اے لاٹ اباؤٹ کمیونیکیشن اے لاٹ اباؤٹ کمیونیکیشن ان دا سینس دیٹ یو ہیو ناؤ گاٹ دا ریئل انسائٹ into the process which is involved in the whole process of interacting with people and also in communicating with yourself to decide what to say, how to say and when to say. Aaj jo mein aap se mazid aage is baare mein guftugu karunga, usse pehle mein kuch personal cheezein aap se discuss karna chahunga. وہ اس لیے کہ میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ یہ جو سبجیکٹ میں آپ کے ساتھ ڈسکس کر رہا ہوں یہ آپ کی روزمرہ زندگی میں بھی آپ کو فائدہ دے گا اور ساتھ ہی آپ کی پروفیشنل زندگی میں بھی تو ہمیں کچھ یہ بھی ڈسکس کرنا چاہیے کہ اس کی لرننگ ٹیکنیکس کیا ہوں کیا اس سبجیکٹ کو دوسرے سبجیکٹس کی طرح پڑھنا چاہیے یا کوئی نیا طریقہ اختیار کرنا چاہیے میں اس کی مثال آپ کو اپنے مذہب سے دوں گا کیونکہ میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ مذہب ہمیں زندگی میں رہنا سکھاتا ہے ہمیں مذہب طور اتوار کے بارے میں بتاتا ہے ہمیں لوگوں کے ساتھ انٹریکٹ کرنے میں بھی اور اس کے لیے ایک چیز بار بار کہی گئی کہ نماز قائم کرو اور دوسری بات کہ قرآن مجید کی تلاوت روز کرو اگر مقصد قرآن مجید کو ایک دفعہ پڑھ کے سمجھ کے بند کرنا ہوتا تو روز پڑھنے کی تلقین نہ کی جاتی اب چونکہ میں آپ سے کچھ ڈسکشن کر چکا ہوں تو آپ اس میسج کے بارے میں اگر سوچیں تو آپ ریئلائز کریں گے کہ ہاؤ مچ ویٹیج از ویئر ان اے اسٹیٹمنٹ دیٹ یو نیڈ ٹو ریڈ قرآن ریسائٹ قرآن ایوری ڈے وائی بیکاز دا ٹینڈینسی ٹو فوگیٹ ان اے ہیومن بینگ از اے نارمس میں نے آپ کو بتایا کہ ہم چیز سنتے ہیں بھول جاتے ہیں ففٹی پرسینٹ امیڈیٹلی آپ نے پڑھا کتاب کو بند کر کے رکھا ففٹی پرسینٹ بلینک شاید اسی وجہ سے حکم ہوا کہ اس کو بار بار پڑھو اور بار بار پڑھنے سے آپ یو ول گو ان ٹو دا ڈیپتھ آف دی میسج اینڈ یو ول انڈرسٹینڈ اینڈ اسیمولیٹ اٹ بیٹر اینڈ بیٹر تو پہلا میسج میں یہ آپ سے کہنا چاہوں گا کہ ہم جس طریقے سے اپنے مذہب میں اٹینشن ریٹینشن اور ریپیٹیشن کرتے ہیں تو چونکہ یہ سبجیکٹ بھی ریلیٹڈ ہے ہماری لائف سے تو ہمیں اس کے لیے بھی یہی کرنا چاہیے بلکہ میں تو یہ کہوں گا ہر وہ سبجیکٹ جو سمجھتے ہیں کہ آپ کے لیے اپلیکیبل ہے ان پریکٹیکل لائف آپ کو یہی کرنا چاہیے کہ کیپ یور کیپ گیونگ یور سیلف میسجز اینڈ ایوری ڈے try to practice it this is a message which reminds you what to do during the day to main ye chahunga aur i hope that you must be doing before coming and listening to my lectures do go through the previous lectures and also the the material which has provided to you unko revise kar liya kare aur kuch na kuch روز پک کر کے اپنی پریکٹیکل لائف میں ڈیمونسٹریٹ کیا کریں پھر لوگوں سے انٹریکٹ کر کے پوچھا کریں ان سے بھی فیڈ بیک لیا کریں جیسے میں نے فیڈ بیک کی آپ کو ایمفیس ہر جگہ دے رہا ہوں لسننگ میں بھی میں کہتا ہوں رائٹنگ میں بھی جب آپ انٹر پرسنل کرتے ہیں تو بھی تو فیڈ بیک از امپورٹنٹ سو دیٹ یو کڈ میک این اسسمنٹ آپ کیا لرن کر رہے ہیں کتنی آپ میں امپروومنٹ آ رہی ہے تو اسٹارٹنگ ود دس پریمس میں چاہوں گا کہ آپ ہر نیا لیکچر سننے سے پہلے پرانے لیکچرز کو گو تھرو کیا کریں اور کچھ نہ کچھ روز پریکٹس کریں پروسیس کو سمجھیں لسننگ ایبلٹیز کو امپروو کریں رائٹنگ ایبلٹیز کو امپروو کریں میں نے نان وربل پہ زور دیا میں نے اپیئرنسز پہ زور دیا میں نے اور بہت سی چیزوں کے اوپر یہ پریکٹیکل چیزیں ہیں میں چاہوں گا کہ آپ ان کے بارے میں روز ریویو کر کے اپنی لائف کے اندر امپروومنٹ لاتے جائیں ہیونگ سیٹ دیٹ 
let me pick up the things which we covered in the last eight chapters. Because I would today like to sum up what we already covered and in a way to have a holistic picture about the subject which is the barriers to communication today and that is completely related to all the past lectures we have covered so far. Agar mein pishle lectures ke salient features pick karun, unke important points mein aap ke saamne laun, to sabse pehli cheez jo mujhe nazar aati hai, wo ye ke maine aap se kaha ke hamari aank kitna kuch dekhti hai. Hamare gird itne kuch messages hai jo hume har vakt messages mil rahe hote hai. Aur उन मैसेजेस को हम कैसे रिसीव कर रहे हैं मैंने कहा आपको मैंने आपको बताया कि हमारी आंख हैज द कैपेबिलिटी ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग 500 मिलियन बिट्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन पर मिनट मगर लिमिटेशन ये है कि हमारा दिमाग सिर्फ 500 बिट्स ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन प्रोसेस कर सकता इतना कुछ देखने के बावजूद हम उसमें से सिर्फ एक पार्ट एसिमिलेट कर सकते हैं एक पार्ट को प्रोसेस कर सकते हैं इंसान की लिमिटेशन कितनी है मैसेजेस हमें मिल रहे हैं लोग समझते हैं हम देख रहे हैं लेकिन हम देख नहीं रहे होते तो जब मैं बैरियर्स के बारे में डिस्कस करूंगा तो ये पॉइंट जो मैंने पिछले लेक्चर्स में मेंशन किया था ये ज़हन में आपके बार-बार उभरना चाहिए कि ये कैसे बैरियर क्रिएट करता है फिर मैंने आपको एक और बात की कि वी आर कांस्टेंटली आर सेंसरी स्टिमुलाइज आर कांस्टेंटली बीइंग बंबार्डेड विद साउंड्स विद डिफरेंट साउंड्स और कुछ साउंड्स को हम प्रोसेस कर सकते हैं कुछ साउंड्स को नहीं कर सकते वी पुट ऑन फिल्टर्स वी ट्राई टू कट आरसेल्स ऑफ and we cannot completely absorb completely listen to the messages around us itna kuch kaha ja raha hai hamare lekin i cannot listen to everything another limitation kya wajah hai isliye ki mere mind ki capacity hi nahi dekha jaye to hum apne mind ka hardly 1% istemal karte hain अगर वो भी कर ले तो बहुत बड़ी बात एट टाइम्स वी डोंट यूज दैट सो लिमिटेशन इज देयर टू मैंने आपसे कहा कि हमारी लिसनिंग एबिलिटीज भी पूरी नहीं है क्योंकि लिसनिंग एबिलिटीज में हम मैसेज को सुनते ही 50% परसेंट भूल जाते हैं हम रिटेन ही नहीं कर सकते हम अंडरस्टैंड ही नहीं कर सकते इंसान कितना हैंडीकैप्ड है इन सारी चीजों से कि वो मैसेजेस जो उसके गिर्द हैं उनको वो कंप्लीटली जैसे उसको सुनना चाहिए वो सुन नहीं सकता मैंने आपको एक और बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट बात बताई थी कि स्पीच में व्हेन यू आर व्हेन यू गेट द मैसेज ऑफ अ स्पीच यू कैन नॉट रिप्रोड्यूस इट द वे यू यू हेयर द स्पीच इस वक्त जब मैं आपसे बात कर रहा हूं क्या वो सब कुछ मैंने जो आपको कहा है क्या आप इसको रिपीट कर सकते हैं वर बैटम वर्ड बाय वर्ड नो यू कांट बिकॉज आर मेमोरी ऑफ स्पीच इज नॉट रिप्रोडक्टिव इट इज रिकंस्ट्रक्टिव दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कीप इन माइंड रिकंस्ट्रक्टिव मींस आप मैसेजेस रिसीव करने के बाद अंडरस्टैंड करने के बाद आप उस मैसेजेस को रिकंस्ट्रक्ट आप एग्जैक्टली लाइक अ फोटोजेनिक मेमोरी आप उसको रिप्रोड्यूस नहीं कर सकते जिस तरह से इस कैमरे की रील मेरे सारे अफेक्ट्स को रिकॉर्ड कर रही है और जब चाहें जिस वक्त चाहें उसको रिप्ले कर लें विल बी द सेम मेमोरी इज नॉट लाइक दैट एन अदर हैंडी कैप हम बाउंड हैं लिमिटेशन ऑफ ह्यूमन माइंड से लिहाजा 
जब हमारी लिमिटेशन यहां इतनी हो बैरियर्स कहां आएंगे कीप इन माइंड दूसरी बात मैंने और भी कही थी कि ड्यूरिंग द लैंग्वेज वी मेक यूज ऑफ वर्ड्स एंड ऐसे वर्ड्स हैव नो मीनिंग्स इमेजिन वी अटैच मीनिंग टू वर्ड्स अपने कोई उनके मतलब नहीं वर्ड्स डिफर करते हैं एक वर्ड के कितने ही मायने हैं then how you interpret those words depends on your mental state phir uske upar ek aur limitation that our conversation is bound only by words which express the message only to the extent of 7% 93% aapne mere non verbal gestures non verbal cues se aap mere messages ko receive karte hain What a what a lacuna inbuilt in the message. Big handicap. Words no meaning. मैंने एक और भी चिक बात आपसे की थी. अगर ये ख्याल है कि ज़्यादा communication से, ज़्यादा openness से, ज़्यादा candidness से, ज़्यादा verbosity से आप अपने आप को clarify करेंगे, नहीं. Can't happen. Major limitation. so when we are bound with so many things barriers do occur barrier ki aapne definition dekhi things people say or do that are obstacles to good conversation or good interpersonal interaction ye barriers isi ni jagah se arrive hote hain because we do not know exactly what word to use एंड वेयर टू यूज और फिर मैंने एक और चीज कही थी हमारा इंट्रैक्शन विद पीपल आर एक्सप्रेशन आर एक्सचेंज डिपेंड्स ऑन आर बिहेवियर एंड वॉट इज आर बिहेवियर बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू दैट पीपल जज यू बाई योर बिहेवियर बिकॉज पीपल हैव गॉट डिफरेंट बैकग्राउंड डिफरेंट एक्सपीरियंसिस सो इफ दे हैव टू जज अस बाय आर बिहेवियर विच इज वन ऑफ द नॉन वर्बल आस्पेक्ट दैट आर बिहेवियर are driven by our thoughts by our feelings by our emotions and these are different are different in different people so the limitations are there too man is so badly handicapped with all these things that in spite of the fact that god has given us so many faculties to find out to express ourselves to exchange the causes and effects of our interaction we still make mistakes while we are interacting with people and when i'm talking of barriers i'm i'll be referring to all these things we are handicapped in the sense that we because our experiences because our backgrounds because our behaviors we expect to hear what we want to hear we want to see what we want to see we want people to behave the way we want them to behave and that is where the whole complexity of the relationship changes that is what makes the whole process of communication very complex and unfortunately what happens is that living in such a complex environment we try to simplify it we try to give simple solutions to to complex problems mere paas agar koi shakhs aata hai mera subordinate aata hai uske paas usko emotional problem hai usko work problem hai usko family problem hai he or she comes and discusses the problem but then i am driven by my own professional goals what normally in a situation happens is i ignore all those aspects the limitations what i have talked to you just now and i try to take action to take remedial measures according to my own perception according to my own desires according to my own achievements that is where 
the barrier arises. Aaj, jab mein aap se barriers ke baat mein, baare mein baat karunga, to mein ye sari chizon ke upar baar baar aunga, mein refer back aapko karunga. Good communication skills are in fact mutual respect skills. Keep in mind, communication is an art, is, an, is a way where you learn or show respect. Communication ka ye bahut important aspect hai, that you respect others and at the same time you maintain your own respect. And when I'm saying maintaining your own respect means self-respect, self-esteem. And this you can have, this you can attain both by giving and taking. That is when I am listening to you, then I must demonstrate I respect to your viewpoint. And at the same time when I'm listening to you, I must maintain my own respect to tell you my own point of view, but not aggressively. That is the difference where you can listen to other person's point of view and yet you can maintain. You can say, well, I differ, but then a person is discussing his or her own emotional suffering, then that doesn't mean that you completely try to put yourself in a different frame than that of the person. Listening, you must, as I said earlier, have the same frame of reference, frame of mind, frame of thought of the person. And that is where you would overcome the barrier of the person. So, starting with this premise, what I would like to say to you is that barriers occur when we mutually disagree, overlook or completely reject these basic things or basic handicaps. If you keep these in mind, then we'll appreciate that with these limitations, we must try to accommodate and at the same time adjust to what our objectives and our goals are. The barrier to communication occurs when we break the bondage of respect while talking to people. I said respect is important. When you break that barrier, when you break that bondage, a barrier occurs. And what happens is that when the barrier occurs, then three possibilities are. One, that you become judgmental. You start judging a message, judging a person. Second, you start sending messages, sending replies. Or third is, you avoid the person's concern. I'll be talking to you about these three elements, three possibilities. Judging, sending replies or messages, or giving responses, whatever, whichever way you want. Or third, avoiding it. When you, when you listen to a person and you start judging, what you, what you can do is, you can become critical. Like you remember the, the, uh, the example of a student who complained or who shared his viewpoints with his students that he got C grade. And if the response was, he said he, he worked very hard, but if the response was that you did not work hard enough, you didn't work long enough, you didn't work carefully, this is a critical reply. You are critical. Agar aapka bachcha aapke paas aakar koi complain karta hai, koi share karta hai apni feelings, aur aap usko critically jawab dein and say, tum hamesha ya sahi karte ho, ye tumhari aadat ban gai hai. Go, go back. You are critical. Up, you haven't replied with empathy. This is because you have become judgmental. You have not listened to the person. 
one factor. That is, you become critical. Second factor is that you may indulge in, into name calling. Aapke paas, aapka bacha hai, aap use kehna shuru karte You are stupid. You are dull. You got low IQ. Mere paas agar mere student aaye, problems le kar aaye, aur main is tarah unko, I shun them, I degrade them, I de-evaluate them, and I said, well, you can never improve your grades. That is, by labeling them, you are dull, you got low IQ, this is name calling. And that is what is again a way of judging people and giving a point of view which will depress the person. Or there could be third possibility, that is, that when you try to diagnose it and say, Agar tum isko is tarah se karo, to better hai. Right? Aap usko instructions de rahe hain, aap usko bata rahe hain, ki agar aap, or for other matter, that you can say, well, when you are saying that you are getting, uh, you got low grades, does it mean that you, you have an impression that your teacher didn't evaluate you uh, rightly? Aap diagnose kar rahe and you have arrived at a solution by your own. All these three scenarios would distance the listener from you. He or she will be depressed because the person came to you for counseling, came to you with a view to getting a sympathetic response, but you have become judgmental. And that is where the barriers occur during the communication. I said to you that we also at times while interacting we indulge in responsing, giving responses. And those responsing, not, we are not diagnosing, we are not uh, criticizing, we are not name calling, but instead of being judgmental we give them solutions. And that's how we say, okay, forget about it. Whatever has, has happened, has happened. Now in future, you have to work four hours a day instead of two hours. You have ordered your child to work harder than before. Since you are in a position to order, you are in a position to instruct, you by force have asked the person to obey your orders. This is, you thought, the solution of the problem the person has tried to share with you. This is ordering. And perhaps you thought, but it is not the right way. Second way could be threatening. A boss could adopt another posture. If you do not deliver this assignment tomorrow, by this time, I'm going to fire you. The person will respond under duress, like a punishment. Again, you have distanced, you have created a barrier. A third way of giving a solution could be moralizing. Aapke paas, aapka bacha problem le kar aya hai. Complain kar raha hai ke dusre bhai ne ziyati ki mara hai. Aap se ke nahi. Tum chote ho, jao. Tum complain le kar aayo, usse maafi maango. Hamesha chote bade se maafi maangte. Moralize karne ki koshish ki hai. Taught morals. A different reaction would appear in the mind of the, of the child. So, moralizing at times creates barrier as well in a, in, in a person. Hum baaz dafa excessive Interrogation may indulge karte. When sharing opinion, a concern, we try to find out by asking more questions. Kaise hua? Kyun hua? Tumara behavior kya tha? Tumne kya kiya? Kaha galti ki? Ki ya nahi ki? Excessive interrogation. This as, as well at times makes the person go into defensive 
because you have started interrogating. You have started grilling the person, which a person does not like. So excessive interrogation also causes barrier in a person. We also at times indulge in advising. This is also giving solutions. Advising in the sense, isko aise nahi, aise kar lo. It's purely my own personal point of view, but I am trying to impose my experience, my viewpoint, my the way I have analyzed it onto a person who may or may not be receptive. So advising for a solution as well could, prob could create problems, could create barriers. Advising could be good, but then you have to see whether the advisor advice is sought for or not. A person is asking for your advice or not. To do this situation, where barriers come from, when we indulge in to provide solutions to the people. This aspect, I have told you that you avoid listening to a person's concern. Somebody wants to share his or her concerns with you. You have to listen to the story of the story. Come on, you are bored. Let's go to the coffee. Pe jata Forget about it, you know. Come in a different mood. The person wants somebody to share, to listen, but then you are diverting and you say, okay, let me tell you my own story. So there too, you divert the person from his or her main concern. That causes barrier because the person wants somebody to listen to his point of view. So diverting the attention will again cause barriers. So with all these barriers, what I have said to you so far, we have to see that while interacting with people, we avoid these three elements which will cause barrier. I will ab one by one elements pe kuch cheezeon ke baare mein bataunga and we will see what causes which barrier? Because there are situations when we have to see what is the cause and the effect. Barriers trigger our defensiveness, resistance and resentment. Because people are interacting under stress, by creating barrier, you tend to block the feelings of the other person. Having said all this, underst having understood what causes barriers? Let's see in detail what are the causes and what are the effects. Kaun si cheez, kaun sa barrier create karti hai? Aur sabse pehle hum jo dekhte hain, wo hai over communication. Mane jaise aapko kaha tha, communication, communication everywhere. You are receiving messages. Particularly here I would like to take you into an organization. Jahan, aap, you are fed in, you are flooded with information, right and left. Yaad rahe, ke many organization, ke flow of information mein, detail aap se guftugu ki, when I was talking to you about the downward and the backward, the feedback flow, I told you that the whole organization runs like a body where like a blood flowing in an organization, we are bombarded, we are flooded with lots of information, both written and oral. What is the effect of overload, of excessive information which a person encounters? Imagine that you are working with one of your chief executive officers He's away. He's out of the city. He phones you up one day and tells you that he's coming back the very next day. And on the phone, using that channel, 
your chief executive officer tells you what to do the next day. He tells you that he, while arriving, coming back to the office, he immediately wants a meeting of the head of the departments. He tells you that the moment he arrives, he wants to go into the boardroom and have a meeting with the heads of the department, and he tells you the whole agenda he wants to discuss with people. Everything needs to be readied when he's in the office. Now, what happens is, that while he's, he was giving you the information, you forgot to ask, and also the chief executive officer forgot to tell you the flight number. What time is he coming? He didn't tell you whether he's coming in the afternoon or whether he's coming in the evening. You have prepared everything, but you lost the contact of your boss. Supposing he doesn't carry, or it's, a, it's an age where there's no cellular phone. I'm just taking an example. You are completely out of contact with your. But since there was an overload of information, he told you so many things to do while, discuss, while telling you the, giving you the information, he forgot to tell you the time or something very special he wanted you to do. So the quantum of information which is passed on to a person would determine the load that person can take. If the person is very efficient, he's very competent, he certainly would ask what time, how much, how long the, the, uh, the, the uh, meeting would go, and many other questions. So remember, where there's too much information coming down or going back, there are chances that important points would be missed. That's a dilemma of information overload that you fail to sift the important from the unimportant essential from non-essential things what is useful and what is not useful so for a person like working under a boss a higher authority the chances of lapses are many more I'll give you a beautiful personal example I encountered once there was a time when I used to edit a magazine and I went for an interview of the top boss of one of the sensitive organizations. I sought the time for that interview. When I went there and while I, I was about to start, I switched on my tape recorder. The boss said, no, I'm not going to have my speech taped. I said, well, I can't do two things at the same time. He said, okay, then I'm going to give you a stenographer. He will do the rest of the things while you just engage yourself in the interview. I completed that in interview after one and a half hour. And then finally, when the boss left, I asked him to give me everything in writing. Type, type the whole script. When it fin finally arrived onto my table, I found that there were lots of things missing. Some very important points were missing in that. I asked him the reason. He said the boss was speaking too fast and he could not write down everything. The fault was he was trying to write down everything instead of picking up the main points. So remember, when you are overloaded with information and you are trying to write down everything, you miss a lot. You, you cannot sift through the information. Same thing happens into, into your organization. You as a boss, getting lots of memos, lots of reports. I encounter the problem and at times I miss the important information. This is the irony in organizations, in modern organizations, in our professional life. Imagine there are about 7.5 million um, informations, new information, 7.5 million articles, topics uh, on, on the internet appearing every day. So much information. You receive a lot of information through faxes, you know, um, through your uh, voice messages, through emails, cellular phones. We do not have the capacity to sift through all this information. So the chances of errors are magnified. What is the solution? That we only look for the pertinent information. 
as I said, into the, into the whole structure or flow of information, that we have to identify that what is needed where. Cut down on the excessive written information or like the boss was giving information on the phone, had he or she resorted to a fax, the confusion could have been avoided. So over communication causes you to grapple for the right message. You're groping for the, what the real message is. You're trying to find out the hidden message from a lot of material uh, you are receiving. So remember that in over communication, where there is a lot of flow of information, you see to it that the person who is receiving either is competent enough, proficient enough to assimilate, to digest, or otherwise just pertinent information to be given, to the provide, provided to the people who can make, make an efficient use of the over communication. We have, as a supervisor, as a manager, Focus on this ability, this skill, because if we do not do this, then certainly, as I said, that there would be filters and then the, the whole information flowing down would not reach where it's wanted to reach. Next point. Conflicting information causes mental turbulence. Imagine that you are sitting in a meeting with different heads of departments who are interrelated for the productivity of an industry. Procurement department giving you information, supply department giving you information, marketing giving you information, production giving you information, and you have to see and determine that what what report you have prepared, does the whole information fit into the, 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 the uh, game plan well enough what you had thought? You find now what you presumed does not tally with the information you received previously. You'll be confused. You will not be able to make a plan because somehow the information does not coincide. It conflicts. Likewise, people at different levels need to share what, what goes on in, into an organization. And they need to be given the same information which has been given to the top people. If there's conflict, those at the down below would be working with a different perspective, at the top with a different objective. And when the clash comes, the whole stability and the, uh, the coordination breaks down. It is important that for any organization, the information which is spread around, the information which is, which is circulated, there must be harmony, no conflict. Likewise, when I go in a meeting, and if, if it is a continuity of the previous meetings I held, and I find that every time I go, there's something new coming up. And it's not exactly the way the things should progress. And the whole things conflict. It creates turbulence in my mind. I am confused. That creates barrier. And either I would just keep my mouth shut, or I just will enter into a dialogue which will create confusion and disharmony. Language difference a very important aspect, very important element because inappropriate use of language causes misunderstanding. Another terminology which is used for language differences is called the semantics. Semantics is the, is the language of words, it's the science of words, the different nuances, the different shades of the words. That's called semantics. Politicians often use of this uh, beauty or the delicacy of the words. Sometimes they do not want 
to give a very clear picture. So therefore, they pronounce words which have got more than one meaning. And that is where it leaves the people guessing what the speaker has said. And that at times causes confusion, causes barrier. Or at times it keeps the people guessing and then you just see how the people behave. It can be used positively, it can be used negatively. So semantics, when persons indulge in semantics, they can cause problems or at the same time they can postpone certain things till they give concrete message. The only way to avoid this misunderstanding is that we need to know the use of words with focus that we use concrete, definite words and do not diffuse the meaning. Let me give you an example. If I say to you that, well, don't you bother about your finances, I'll take care of your financial problems. Now, I say, I'll take care of your financial problems. What does it mean? Am I going to loan you money? Am I go going to give you stipend? I, am I going to waive you for the fee you want to put in before getting admission into our college? It's too pious. It's not clear. I have indulged into semantics by saying, I'll take care of you. Supposing I organize a dinner in the honor of one of my guests who is coming to my house. I want to invite a couple of my other friends too. And I say to one of my friends, hey, come, come tomorrow over dinner, come with your partner. Now here, I use the word partner. I didn't use the word come with your wife. The partner could be a business partner. The partner could be his friend sharing his room, a male friend. But I have been dubious. I have not been clear. In a culture, it would, dif it would mean different in any other culture. So partner has got different meanings. Likewise, using the words like wages, honorarium, salary, these words confuse. They create misunderstanding. So which word you use in which perspective will cause problem. People have got different perceptions. I say, and I gave you this example before, that I am a liberated person. Words like, which carry emotional overtones, honesty, pleasure, freedom, Human rights have got different connotations attached according to the background. So using such words would create misunderstanding if the sender and the receiver are not in the same frame of reference. So often language differences cause misunderstanding. And in a business setup that you have to see, that you, you use concrete words, specific words, clear words, or rather explain them, uh, explain them so that there is no confusion in the minds of the people. And for that, you must keep in mind the perception of the receiver, the background, the intellectual level, and then avoid this misunderstanding. And it would be on you to see that the words are read in the, or heard in the clear perspective. Differences in attitudes. If this is the cause, the effect would be lack of interest. People at times have different moods. And those moods, they are a reflection of how they they work in an environment. If the environment is very healthy, very conducive, very supportive, 
the attitude would be different. Ad attitude of the labor versus the attitude of the supervisor. How harmonious relationship are there existing between the two cadres will determine the attitude of the people. Sometimes people at the down, at the lower level, they're concerned about raising their salaries. They're concerned about their safety and environment. They are concerned about their social well-being. So their attitude working in an organization is that they must be well looked after. But if the boss is ignorant of all these things, then he or she might be showing a different attitude. This would lead to a lack of interest in the people. Let me give you an example of your family, of my family. If my child expects me to be with him when I come back from the office, but I realize that I'm, I'm tired, I'm overworked, I've got other assignments to do, then if I avoid my child, my child will look at my attitude of my neglecting him, will lose interest in me, will not like to interact with me. My partner, my wife would look at my attitude. Am I giving her time? Am I giving time to my children? So whatever your attitude is at home and the office is going to determine how do people interact with you with interest or completely ignore you. Very important. Your attitude should be positive. No matter what situation, your mental situation, then you must cut yourself off and try always to be in a positive attitude and see to it that it does not create disharmony because if you ignore people, if you are in your own mental groove, your own mental absorbed state and you show a negative attitude, people will lose interest in you and the relationship will be disturbed. Tendency to evaluate Another element, another cause would create distancing from the speaker. I said to you in my previous lectures that we do not need to be judgmental all the time. Whenever we try to evaluate or judge people and we do not show empathy, no matter how important it is for the person to share or exchange views, you will see that people will completely ignore you. It is important for you that you bring yourself in a state where you look, listen to the people and listen to the people from their own frame of reference. Otherwise, there are chances that if you keep on evaluating judging people, then people will cut themselves off. They will remove themselves from you and they will not share their feelings. People will not interact with you and you will be socially isolating yourself from the people. Maybe your own family, maybe the people you work in an organization. It is important before you start evaluating Remember, you, before you start judging, it is important you understand people. You go into their frame of mind of the people and see what they want to share with you. Don't be judgmental. Don't evaluate people. Because you are increasing to your knowledge by knowing their feelings, by knowing their problems. And if you try to be judgmental, if you try to evaluate, like the example I gave you of the, of the student, what will happen? People will withdraw. But you do, do not need to be insulated from people. You want a constant interaction. And distancing is not the solution. Engagement is the answer. And that's where you need to be very careful that you, instead of evaluating people, you try to be in harmony with their thoughts and at least 
share the information. And as, as I said in the beginning of my lecture today, that you can non-aggressively give your own point of view. It's giving and taking. It's respecting. When I evaluate a person and give my own point of view, then that means I may criticize, I may try to avoid, or I may try to give solutions to people which they might not receive. And my purpose at times would not be to indulge in such situations, but to just find out what is the people want to share with me. That is, instead of evaluating people, let me just know what is the real issue. How can I resolve the issue? How can I be helpful to them? And always maintain that closeness with the people. Today, I'm going to end up here. There are certain more elements which I would be discussing, but I'll be discussing those in my next lecture. Suffice to say today that while looking for the, for the errors you make, which may cause barriers, you see to it that you avoid them right in the beginning. Lehaza, aaj ke lecture mein abhi tak jitne elements mein aap ke saath discuss kiye isko main aage continue karunga lekin main chahunga ke jab main next lecture mein isko continue karu to aap inko phir ek dafa deeply study kare aur mere past lectures ko go through karke jo salient points maine aaj aapko bataye hain जो कि बैरियर्स क्रिएट करते हैं उनको जहन नशीन करके लाइएगा आइएगा क्योंकि आज जो चीज मैंने आपको स्पेशली हाईलाइट की है जो कि पहले मैंने नहीं की थी वो ये है म्यूचुअल रिस्पेक्ट कम्युनिकेशन में अगर म्यूचुअल रिस्पेक्ट का एलिमेंट आप ले आएंगे तो आप काफी हद तक बैरियर्स को एलिमिनेट कर पाएंगे वो इसलिए के रिस्पेक्ट गिविंग एंड टेकिंग में आप अपनी सेल्फ कॉन्सेप्ट अपना सेल्फ इमेज और दूसरे का इमेज और कॉन्सेप्ट मेंटेन करते बैरियर्स के लिए जरूरी है कि आप जो एलिमेंट्स मैंने आपको इन द स्टार्ट ऑफ दिस लेक्चर एम्फेसाइज किए उनको प्रैक्टिस कीजिए एवरीडे लाइफ के अंदर मैंने कम्युनिकेशन ओवरलोड की बात आज की मैंने एटीट्यूड की बात की मैंने ये भी बात की कि हम एट टाइम्स वी इग्नोर द अदर पर्सन वी ऑर्डर वी इन फाइनिंग सोल्यूशन वी ट्राई टू जज पीपल वी क्रिटिसाइज वी नेम कॉल ये सारी चीजें इंपॉर्टेंट हैं माइंडेड और ये चीजें जो हैं हम पांच दफा इग्नोरेंस में कर जाते हैं Sometimes we do not mean it, but out of ignorance, we spoil our relationship, and these skills need to be developed. We are not born with these skills. Want if you want to be successful manager, if you want to be a successful supervisor, and overall, if you want to be a successful human being, you must start developing, improving upon these skills. Inshallah. मैं कंटिन्यू करूंगा बैरियर्स में क्योंकि बैरियर्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट बैरियर्स को अगर आप ओवरलुक करेंगे बैरियर्स को एलिमिनेट करेंगे बैरियर्स को आप रिड्यूस करेंगे आपकी कम्युनिकेशन में अफेक्टिविटी आएगी और आपकी जिंदगी में निखार आएगा थैंक यू वेरी मच आई होप टू सी यू अगेन नेक्स्ट टाइम खुदाफिज